Joshua chapter 2. Let's begin with verse 1. Joshua, son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly. He only sent two. He found him two full of faith. <laughs> he, he learned what sending out a whole, whole platoon will get you. Amen. <laughs> so he just, he, he sent out two. They went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in here tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, You bring those men that come to thee, which are entered into your house, for they, they come to search out our country. And she took two men and took the two men and hit them. And, and then she sent that bunch off on a wild goose chase. Now, verse 8, before they were laid down, she came up to them on the roof, and she said unto the men, now listen to this, I know that the Lord, now you see capital L, small capital O-R-D there, that indicates that she is using the name of God. Now that's an interesting thing. Now this is the harlot Rahab. Well, what's she doing using that name? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. <laughs> I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land, all the inhabitants, how many inhabitants? All of the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord, how yod heh had dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of, of Jordan. You utterly destroyed them. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For yod heh vav -Hey, your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Amen. Then why did 10 out of 12 of that original recon team back off in fear and say, we, 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 we can't handle this. We can't do this. We can't take that land. They had no faith that God loved them and they had no faith in the plan. God said, I have given you that land. Go possess it. But now look, God is always working on the other end of the plan. He's not going to tell them that because they have to go by faith. Faith is where their strength is. Joshua and Caleb stayed in faith, praise God, the whole 40 years. And they went over there 40 years older. Why? They had faith in God, they believed that he loved them and all of Israel, and they had faith and they believed the plan. We can take this. We can do this. God will help us and we can take that mountain. We can take, give it here, Caleb said, give it to me. I'm, man, he was chomping it a bit. He didn't know they'd been defeated. But look what God had done. 
they could have gone in there and they could have taken that land and never fired a shot. Can you see it? I said, can you see it? When God told you to go witness to so-and-so and you didn't want to do it, I don't want to do that. Man, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Well, why is it you don't want to? Oh, they're not going to run me off the front porch or blah, 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 whatever. No, he's already there. I said, he's already there. One of my favorite things to never, ever do again is anything that has to do with a lawnmower. You understand? <laughs> I don't like them. I don't want to never have nothing to do with another one. <laughs> and, and, and back there years ago, what the kids called the olden days, um, I'm out in the front yard. Now, I mean, to stay gone for several weeks preaching the Word, so tired, I felt like I'd been pulled through a keyhole, man. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm out there mowing the yard. Mm! Not happily. <laughs> I got out there and I'm pushing that thing up and down. That little old yard wasn't <laughs> much bigger than that platform. I don't know if there's any bigger than that platform. And I'm about halfway through and the word of the Lord came to me. He said, when you got done here, go next door and, mar and, and, and mow the lemons lawn." I said, well, Lord, they're going to look out the window and they're going to say, who is that fool mowing our yard? I never call nobody to mow the yard. But then I thought, well, you said do it. I'm going to do it. And I, was, I started over there, and I, there's just a driveway between their yard and ours. And so I finished our and just kept it running, went across the driveway and started mowing there. He said, now, I want you to lay claim to this territory. So I did for me, and I did. And I'm just, you know what happened? The moment I got on that other man's property, I don't know, there's a spring come in my step. You know, it's the only yard I ever mowed in my life that I enjoyed mowing. I, 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 that's it. That's number one. That was number last. <laughs> but I mowed it with joy. Just had a big time. Cause it, it was obvious after I got over there that they, they were gone because they'd grown up pretty high. And I thought, this blesses me to get to do this for them. Just bless the Lemon family, Lord. They had two little kids that played with John and Kelly all the time. And, and uh, I was just mowing and mowing and mowing and went on back across and forgot it and said anything anymore about it. Well, it was some weeks later. There was a knock on the front door, and I answered the door, and it was Mrs. Lemon. And she was, she was a little bit shorter in glory, and, and glory was not but five, three, you know, Ms. Lemon was a little bit shorter in glory. But I want you to know what she, she lacked in tall, she made up for in loud. <laughs> Man, she went to preaching to me. Did you know that the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, she went to preach, and then she got all the way up to the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost coming, and just, she, she didn't, didn't see me like she breathed. Just going. <laughs> I said, I said, well, ho, ho, <laughs> hold it just a minute, darling. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She said, what? I said, sweetheart, you are preaching what I preach all the time. Oh, okay. And she just kept on preaching. Went out and right at it again. <laughs> I said, what has happened to you? Oh, she said, my whole family has been born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. Glory be to God forevermore. Go, and he's soon coming, King. And here she went again, you know. <laughs> I said, what happened? Oh, Brother Copeland, she said, you know that little church right down the street there? And you turn? I said, yeah. Well, there's a little Presbyterian church. There's a little neighborhood church. She said, that's where we've been going to church all this time because it's closed. 
But she said, there was a lay witness mission come into our church. Whoa, she said, the whole church is on fire for God. The whole church has got the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost. We're Presbyterian Holy Ghost. Praise God. And here she went again. <laughs> well, you imagine, I mean, I got, I really got excited over it, you know. I just blessed her and we talked and preached at one another there for a long time. <laughs> and I went on in the house and he said, you enjoyed that, didn't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, thank you for mowing the yard. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Believe the plan. See, he already was working on that. And he needed faith on this end to bring it to a close. That's who you and I are. We're closers. Amen. Amen. We close the deal in the realm of the spirit. God starts it and we're his agents to close it. Now then, that is a big deal. God, she said, now I pray you swear unto me by the Lord since I've showed you kindness that you will show kindness to me unto my father's house and give me a true token. Well, now we know that in the sixth chapter, verse, um, the walls fell down and so forth. Joshua said to the two men that had spied out the country, go to the harlot's house. You notice he didn't call her Rahab. He said, go to the harlot's house. and bring out the woman, all that she has, as you swore unto her. The young men that were spies went in, brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brethren, all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the, without the camp of Israel. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, are we sure we want to take that kind of people back to Israel with us? Well, what are you talking about, knothead? I mean, we promised her. Well, yeah, but what's a promise to a harlot? Come on, man. Come on now. The war's won and all that. Where are they going to live? We don't know nothing about that bunch. <laughs> don't tell me that people don't think like that. But Joshua didn't think like that. Huh? Are you listening to me now? Now, the, the plan was coming on, wasn't it? God had a plan, right? It's being brought, brought to pass. Let's go over to the first chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Glory, you have your amplified handy. Who has it? Amplified. Old Phyllis has always got a pile of Bibles. That's good. She like glory. Takes a pulpit that wide for both of them. I'm glad too. I tell you, Matthew chapter 1. The book of the ancestry genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the Son of descendant of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus Christ, son of David. You got that? Say it out loud with me. Jesus Christ, the son of David. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. 
Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Aram, Aram the father of Amenadab, Amenadab the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, the father of King David. Rahab, who was called the harlot. Not only was she a harlot, she had a house. Wound up being Jesus' great-grandmother. David's grandma was her, was Rahab the harlot. Don't call her that no more. She made it in Hebrews 11. She's in the hall of fame of faith. Woo! The plan of God was bigger than her past, was it not? Oh, man, when she got in the plan of God, it started changing things. It started turning things around. Look, God had a plan, and the plan was bigger than being a harlot. The plan was bigger than having a house a harlot. The plan was big. The plan brought her, brought her in the kingdom of God aristocracy. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. I'll tell you that excites me to just beyond words. That is so stunning to me. Amen. Amen. And then she comes up in the hall of fame in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, a woman of great faith in God. Say not nothing about her being a harlot. Says a woman of great faith. But it, all, it makes a point, even in the book of Hebrews, to let you remember that she was a harlot. Amen. To let you know and to let me know that that's how big our God is. Being a harlot ain't something he can't handle. It's church people who can't handle it very good, but, but God can handle that. The plan is bigger than that. The blood is bigger than that. The name of Jesus is bigger than that. Oh, I'm telling you, the plan of God is full of sinners. We used to be. Remember at that time when you were without God, the scripture says, and without hope in the world. Ah, but now in Christ Jesus, the walls of partition have come down. <laughs> Glory be to God. Somebody come on and shout amen. He has a plan and he has a cause. Hallelujah. I was born into the priestly family. Panchanatha Jayaraman was born into the Brahmin priesthood in Mumbai, India. The Brahmin priesthood is the highest priestly caste in Hinduism. Panchanatha, also known as Jay, got a business-based education in accounting and easily found entry-level management work. Priestly duties and working in the accounting department at a local business consumed Jay's life until a special someone caught his eye. When we met each other, both of us were not saved. To me, he was a firm, fervent Hindu, and I was a firm, fervent Catholic. And so I thought, you know, I can change him. Then he proposed to me, and when he proposed to me, he said, he gave me a rosary, and he said, he said to me, he said, I will change my religion for you if you only say yes to me. And so I said, no, but you're a Hindu. How can you change your religion? He said, I'll do it for you. 
Despite the objections of family and friends, Jay and Sarah were married. To escape the pressure and rejection, Jay got a job in the Middle East. Bahrain became their home for the next seven years. But the new place, new family, and new job did not eliminate Jay's inner torment and confusion. During that process of suffering, my wife would tell me, you are suffering because I'm a Christian and you are not. You should become a Christian. Jay pursued converting to Christianity, but his effort only left him feeling lonely and helpless. One day I decided, nobody's helping me. I'm struggling, I'm poor, I'm in debt. So I cried out, I said to her, nobody's helping, nobody's real, I'm going to die. So I went out and brought at 10 o'clock a drum of gasoline and I took bath in that in front of her and I tried to light the cigarette lighter, it was not lighting. Then I threw the lighter, went soaking in gasoline to my kitchen, brought a matchbox. I struck every single match while my wife was kneeling down and crying, Jay, don't do this, don't do this. Every match broke. Delirious and frustrated, Jay passed out. The next day, he resolved to make things work. In an attempt to make things better, Jay went shopping for a radio to give his wife as a gift. The salesman told Jay that if he would attend a service at his church, he'd give him a discount. Jay agreed to the condition and attended his church. And these people, they said, we are going to pray, what is your problem? I said, you are Jesus knows everything, you should know my problem, I'm not going to tell you. So they said, okay, our Jesus knows and we will pray. The moment the first man touched me with his finger in the oil, something of 5,000 volts of electric power went through me and I was filled with some kind of a big light and I started crying, oh, this is Jesus, this is God, this is Jesus. One thing I saw when the Lord touched him, he put his hands up and he started weeping. I said, ooh, something is happening to him because, you know, he was quite a depressed person. When I kept saying that, Jesus appeared to me and held me and healed me completely from inside out. And I knew that my life has changed that night. That night, Jay went to sleep for the first time in years without the aid of drugs or alcohol. Jay's passion for an authentic relationship with God took him on a journey of discovery from the Middle East to Middle America. Jay and Sarah admired the way that Kenneth and Gloria quoted the scripture and taught the word. Leaving everything they knew behind, Jay and Sarah enrolled in the Rama Bible School. Their knowledge of the word and their one-on-one -on -one relationship with God grew. See, I teach prosperity not because of money. I want people to know our God really wants all his people to prosper when you follow him. When Kenneth Copeland Ministries published the book Blessings by Kenneth Copeland, the Lord impressed in my heart to invest. So I prayed, I said, what do you mean invest? He told me, get this book and give it to everybody without charge. So I ordered a whole bunch of books, blessings from Kenneth Copeland Ministry. And I am giving to every family in my church freely I gave, uh, and they are reading as a result that is helping them. Founded in 1997, Word of His Power Faith Christian Center in London, Ontario has been Pastor Jay and Sarah's base of operations. From there, they've sent missionaries all over the world. Today I'm successful because between Jesus and my wife, they have made something out of my life. Your words have power. Music play. The words you speak control more than just the stuff in your life. Choose life. Stay on the God side of everything. When you know what to say and how to say it, you can speak life into any situation and change any circumstance with words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Choose Life, Choose Words is a three DVD or six CD teaching from Brother Copeland that shows you how to create the good life you've always wanted. God wants to give you the advantage so you can flourish in every area of life. Choose Life, Choose Words shows you how to thrive God's way. Learn directly from road-tested realities and practical insights from over 45 years of Brother Copeland's study, experience, and personal relationship with God. 
Get Choose Life, Choose Words today and change your life forever. Order Choose Life, Choose Words, the dynamic series by Kenneth Copeland, available on DVD or CD for $17.99. For this and more from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 1-800-600-7395 to order your copies today. Take control over your life. Understand the power of your words and live in the victory God has promised you with Choose Life, Choose Words. For this and other faith-building teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2014 Venezuela Victory Campaign. Kenneth Copeland will be in Maracaibo, Venezuela, September 5th through the 6th. Join Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher for the Living Victory New York Faith Encounter September 12th through 13th in New York, New York. Word Explosion September 25th through 27th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. Now we've just heard a testimony from a man who was trying so hard to follow religion to find peace and joy, but you notice he was still tormented. But when he met Jesus, the light of God came on on the inside of him and his mind and his emotions finally had the peace that he was looking for and he received healing from all that physical torment. Now, it does not matter where you live, what culture you come from, you need to know this. Jesus loves you personally, and He wants to bless your life. In fact, He made it clear that it's the devil that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but that Jesus came to give us abundant life. And to receive that, all you need to do is say, Jesus, I believe you are God's Son. I believe you were raised from the dead so that my sins can be forgiven. Now say, I receive your forgiveness and I ask you to come into my heart and give me new life. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, you are born again, and this is the beginning of a brand new life. And Kenneth Copeland Ministries wants to rejoice with you, so we want you to contact us. Call us or email us, and, and let us know that you prayed that, because we're going to send to you this book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria, and these two brochures, they're going to help you learn how to get into the Word of God, find out who you are. If you'll find out from the Word who God is in you, who you are in Him, it'll change your life forever. Thanks so much for watching today. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Learn who you are in Christ and how to begin your new life in victory. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org. Jesus did it all for you. Receive his love and experience the good life God has for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org. Continue to grow in God's word with this week's Believer's Voice of Victory. Available at kcm.org for purchase, streaming, or download. Let God's grace abound toward you.